Father, at this moment, we recognize how sinful we are. We recognize the times that we did not follow your will. We remember the times that we disobeyed our parents, mistreated our friends, disobeyed our teachers. Lord, we ask for forgiveness at those times. We ask for forgiveness at times that we, we misrepresented your name, Lord. Please forgive us. You can all be seated now. Comfort in his 
Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is our first day of the week of prayer. And we would like to invite everyone to please come on time every 7.30 in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon for our week of prayer until Friday morning. And our program on Friday evening will be a special service because we are going to have our communion service. Now, let me read the statement from the messages to young people to start with. It says, When the way is prepared for the Spirit of God, the blessing will come. When the way is prepared. How are we going to prepare the way for the Spirit of God? So today we will start by first, we will be requesting our teachers. Are you willing to listen now? Okay. We will be requesting our homeroom advisors to please go to your respective assignments, okay? They will be, you will be sitting together with your students. And also, as we prepare the way of the Lord, then we are going to prepare ourselves by setting off our cell phones. We want you to be responsible holding your cell phones, but in case you are being tempted, let me read. There is nothing that Satan fears so much as that the people of God shall clear the way by removing every hindrance so that the Lord can pour out His Spirit upon a languishing and impenitent congregation. So we are going to help each other. Your teachers can help you with your cell phones by keeping it with them in case you are being tempted. And they will return that to you later after the worship service. Okay? So, we will prepare ourselves for this week of prayer. Today, right here, right now. For the sequence of our program, there will be two parts. The speaker will speak for the first 15 to 20 minutes, and then a group facilitator will be in charge of asking the questions for each homeroom. We have prepared two or three facilitators, but in case you don't have a facilitator, our teachers will, will assist you. So you are going to gather yourselves into 12 to 15 persons per group for each homeroom. And then, after we are going to have our appeal, the speaker will come up for the last part, make an appeal, and then we will sing our closing song. So for this morning, I hope that every part, the things that you are going to share to your group, you are going to share it not because you want to please yourselves. No. We want to learn more about God and how God talks to you, how God shares His Word to you, and you are going to share those experiences with your group members as we learn more about God. So let us prepare our hearts. Let us open our minds. And let us be humble as we serve the Lord for this week of spiritual renewal with the theme, Refresh. Let us be refreshed with the Lord.
Good morning, Academy! So, I am so privileged to be standing here before you to share God's Word. So, this week is a very special week. In this week of prayer series, we will be exploring and learning about God's love. So, before we continue, shall we bow down our heads? Let's pray. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, the creator and sustainer of life. Father, as I deliver your message, please speak through me. I know that on my own, I cannot do it. But with you, God, everything is impossible. Father, hide me behind thy cross, that I may speak only thy words. All these things I ask in the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So this week, we will be exploring and understanding who God is and how much He loves us. We will be discussing and looking at the different doctrines in a new perspective. So I entitled my sermon, God's Message, All in One. It's all about the Trinity. So, let's, uh, let's look at this that probably almost all of you heard already. The seventh day is the Sabbath. The Ten Commandments are still valid. And Jesus is coming soon. Who among you here believes that all these three statements are true? Kindly raise your hand. So, you believe that all these statements are true. As Christians and to those who have raised their hands, we know that these statements are true. 
Truth is truth even if you do not believe it. Have you ever wondered, what can truth do to us? So number one principle, it is found in John 17, verse 17. It says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Number one principle says that the truth sanctifies. Second, John 8, verse 32. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Number two principle, the truth sets us free. Next, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Number three principle says that Jesus is the only truth. Again, the truth sanctifies, the truth sets us free, and Jesus is the truth. So among all those important truths that will set us free, the most important simply states that God is love. If the truth will set us free and Jesus is the truth, Jesus will be the only one setting us free. Jesus will set us free from what the world knows and what the world believes. So it states here that God is love. So however in this world today, have you ever experienced when everything seems to go not on your way, when everything seems to be falling apart. I have experienced such thing. There comes a point in our life where I feel like everything just seems so sad. Everything just don't go on my own. But then have you ever asked, how can a God of love be allowing such thing to happen? You know what I've discovered this past day, even to myself? We tend to keep on asking, how, how can a God of love be that someone to allow all these things, all those sad things to go on our way? But then, those who ask such questions, they do not have the idea of the very true nature of God. So what is this character and nature of God? The Father is God. Jesus is God. And the Holy Spirit is God. With our finite mind, we know that it is impossible to grasp this principle. However, we can understand the concept and know the clear teaching of God. How are you that sure that if we serve God, we serve a triune God? Making it simple, it means three in one. God a Father, God a Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is the truth revealed in the scriptures. So I want to show you an illustration to help us understand what a triune God is. So it is God's trinity and the properties of life. Who among you here loves science? So not that much. So we've learned, even in junior high, the properties of light. I love it when I see metaphorical examples in the nature of God. So take, for example, the light. Science tells us that light is constituted of three rays. It is distinct from one another, and no one of which without the other would be light. So each light has its own separate function. The first originates, the second illuminates, and the third consummates. So the first is the visible light, which is the color of the rainbows. 
and the color of the rainbows, we can see it with our naked eye. The visible light encompasses the light, and we can see it with our own eyes. The second component of light includes the life waves that we cannot see. Have you ever went to the dentist and got your x-ray? Those kind of light are the second component. And as you can see with those lights, it is so super potent that we need that those wavelengths are so strong that they can penetrate almost anything. And the third component of light is the giving of heat energy. When it's a cool day, we would like to stand somewhere sunny instead of the shade. So it is something that we do not see, but we certainly feel. So now think about this triad light. The first light is the light that we see. The second light is the light we cannot see but certainly feel its power. And the third light is the light energy we cannot see, but can feel its warmth. When we look at the persons of the Trinity, we know that Jesus is the one who became invisible in this earth. Just like the first component of light, he is visible to us. He stepped out of eternity for us, for him to be seen. Next is the Heavenly Father, which cannot be seen, but we know His immense power. Just like the second light that we cannot see, but truly is very strong and cannot penetrate anything. God the Father, we cannot see Him, and we cannot behold Him because He is way too powerful than us. And the third, it is the light that we cannot see but certainly feel. It is the Holy Spirit. We cannot see Him, yet we know that His presence is within us. Can you see how this creation of light gives us a glimpse of Trinity? This illustration shows us how three can be one. So God wants to work in us and with us, and He uses all the aspects of His character. So let's go to creation. We cannot fully understand the Godhead, but we can capture greater understanding of the Trinity when we learn about creation. So let us consider what Genesis 1 verse 1 says. I know that all of you memorize it. Can we memorize it together? Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Knowing the Hebrew word God in this text, we'll we will understand Trinity. But we know that we are not a Hebrew scholar. So let me share with you. The word God here is from the Hebrew word Elohim. Elohim is plural, meaning more than one. And it says in Genesis 1 verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Us and our is something that is plural. So right there at the very beginning in the creation, God was never ever alone. God was telling us that He was a true in God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were present at the very beginning of creation. So why do you think it is important to understand the beauty of a triune God? So as you discuss with your groups, brethren, I want to tell you that God's love is not an abstract thing. It is never an abstract thing. It is a relationship. Love cannot be experienced in isolation. Love is a relationship. If our Father in heaven is a God of love, why can't we, as His children, 
be reflecting the same thing. As it says, love is a, a relationship and it cannot be in isolation. You can't be just alone and be loving yourself. True love is something that is under the foundation of God. It is something that is God-centered. True love, when it falls apart, it's not something that is about God. True love, when it sets and falls into place, that is when God is with us. So as His children, may we be reflecting to others the love of our Father because we know that God is love. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So to continue our program, we will have our group discussion. So we have chosen some student facilitators to lead our group discussion for this morning. So after that one, so divide your section in quietly in quiet manner according to the number of facilitators that you have. So I'm requesting all the facilitators to stand up as I pray for you. So requesting all the facilitators. Again, requesting all the facilitators to stand up. So let's pray. I'm requesting everyone to close their eyes as I pray. Let's pray. Our dear and kind heavenly Father, we are now here worshiping and praising your name, O oh Lord. Lord, as we, are ha as we have our group discussion for this day, O oh Lord, may you bind us with love and care. May you give the facilitators the knowledge and wisdom that they really need to share your love to the student, students, students here in the academy, O oh Lord. Lord, thank you for everything. We all know that without you, we are nothing, O oh Lord. May you guide each one of us, may you protect each one of us, so that as we discuss the questions that you have prepared for us, we can touch you can touch the hearts of the students here in Academy. Thank you for everything. This was on the loving name of Jesus. Amen.